Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. It's me, Shannon LaBruyere. I am live and loving it tonight. Welcome to Sunday Night Live, where we focus on being equipped to thrive in change. And I'll tell you what, 2020 has been a great training ground for learning how to thrive in change. Am I right? Yeah, lots of change happening. So we're going to talk a little bit about two and a half words that really make it almost impossible for us to reach our full potential. And so before we jump into that, though, I want to remind you that if you are a Thrive in Change Sunday Night Live listener, viewer, you deserve 15% off of the best coffee I've ever drunk, I've ever drank, I ever drank. Grammar police, somebody tell me what I'm supposed to be saying there. <laughs> you deserve the best coffee ever. You can get it online at thumbroastcoffee.com. And if you want to save 15% off of your online order, all you have to do is use the code THRIVE, T-H-R-I-V-E. Thumbroastcoffee.com and your keyword that's going to get you that discount is Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E. I love that stuff. So good. All right. So let's get started. Let's see. Oh, Lisa's here. Hi, Lisa, and happy Sunday. So glad to have you here. For those of you who are jumping on, getting started, drop us a line in the comments and let me know you're here. Say hi. Uh, let us all know you're here. I love to connect with the people who are watching and listening. Uh, it's so valuable. Uh, it really, it feeds my soul. So thank you for being here. Thanks for taking a, a, a significant chunk out of your Sunday evening to lean in and learn how to make your life more fulfilling, how you can thrive in the midst of the change that you want, the change you don't. I'm just grateful that you're willing to open your ears, open your heart, and learn how to make a life you love. So let's get started. Tonight, we are going to be talking about the Thrive and Change Principle, Respect the Now. Hashtag Respect the Now. So if you want to make a comment on this, or if you post something from this broadcast, if you use that hashtag Respect the Now, anybody who wants to find it again six months or six years from now will be able to search that hashtag and find it. Did you know that that's how those hashtags work? Uh, this is a recent uh, a recent lesson for me, so I'm pretty fascinated by hashtags. So absolutely make use of that hashtag respect the now, and it'll allow you to track back and connect with other people maybe who find this valuable too. So with that, we are going to jump into respect the now. And we are talking specifically about the two and a half words, I can't. I cannot. Um, actually, maybe that's two words. It all depends. Don't let me get distracted, you guys. <laughs> Mary Edwards is on time. Yes, Mary, I'm glad you're here. I am glad you're here at the start. That's amazing. And thank you all for jumping on. We're talking about hashtag respect the now. And we're talking about the this idea of I can't. And I'm just going to get to the guts of what I'm trying to say right at the top of this broadcast. I hope you'll stick around to find out the reasoning behind it. But this is what I know is true when it comes time for us to thrive in the midst of change, when it comes time for us to be resilient, to be able to adjust and adapt. The things that we can't do don't hold us back nearly as much as the things that we won't do. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's a truth bomb. The things that we won't do hold us back far more than the things that we think we can't do. A lot of times, a lot of times, we label the things that we don't want to do as things that we can't do. And then we're done, right? We've got a built-in excuse. I can't do it. I can't do it. I won't say never because there are some things that that I can't do. 
Uh, for example, I am very convinced that I cannot be a goalie for the Detroit Red Wings in the National Hockey League. I, I cannot do that. And there is no amount of training or development or positive thinking that I will be able to do to become a goalie in the National Hockey League. It's not going to happen. Right? I can't. I am physically prevented from it. And there's no creative way that I can, can finagle myself into that goalie box. Not going to happen. So that's on the extreme end of the scale. And so I don't want you to use the fact that there are legitimately things that we cannot do. I don't want you to let that convince you that all of the times you say you can't, it's true because it isn't. It's not true. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we can learn to examine the things that we tell ourselves we can't do, if we can learn to be honest with ourselves about those things, we are going to set ourselves up to thrive so much more fully and completely than if we are telling ourselves, I can't, when all we're really doing is making excuses for something that we're not willing to pay the price, all right? So if you've got a pen and paper, I want you to write this down. And I, I want you to have a pen and paper also because at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to ask you to write down a few things. I'm gonna ask you to write down a few things and for those of you who are brave, I'm going to ask you to take a snapshot of them and post them in the comments here or better yet in the Sunday Night Live group. Because when we are honest with ourselves and we can share what we become aware of with other people, it builds in some accountability and that allows us to really, really change. So if you want to get the most out of tonight's broadcast, Get your pen and paper, write a few things down and be ready at the end because I've got a little assignment that you are going to find so valuable. All right. This is the first thing I want to consider. There's there are three variations of the this phrase. I can't that I want to talk about. And the first one is this when sometimes when we say I can't. What we really mean is it's not what I'm used to, right? It's not that we can't, it's just that it's not what we're used to. And our shortcut to not having to make any adjustments is to say, oh, I just can't, I just can't. When we say I can't, and it's because it's not what we're used to, what we're really saying is I won't make the necessary adjustments. I had a great position years ago. I had a great position. I had it for a year. It was awesome. I loved what I did. I got to train people on how to communicate. And it was just, it was amazing. And it lasted for a year. And then it came to an abrupt end. And that position went away. And I was no longer able to do the thing that I loved. And I was told with very little notice, Shannon, I know you've really been loving doing this training and educating and, and developing groups and working on problem solving and, and following process management and Lean Six Sigma. I know you've loved that, but guess what? Next week on this date, you need to go back to working afternoons in the processing plant, driving a forklift on the dock. And so with very little, very little notice, I was informed, yeah, guess what? Things are changing. That's, I can't even describe to you how much I can't came surging into my brain. I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot go back to unloading trucks and driving a forklift and, and not using my best skills. My, the skills I have to communicate and to, to encourage and to inspire, it just felt like I can't do it. But what it really meant wasn't that I couldn't do it. I could do it. It meant I, I didn't want to. It's not what I'm used to. It's not what I love. And I don't want to make 
the adjustment. That's legitimate. But it's also important that we recognize it. Because when we say I can't, and then we're feeling as if we are forced to do something that we're not used to, that we aren't accustomed to, that we did not want, um, we have a lot of resistance that happens, right? And resistance takes all of our energy. I mean, oh my gosh, it's an energy suck. It just drains us. And it also turns off our creativity. When I say I can't do it, what we're often saying is I won't make adjustments. And if we can choose instead to say, I won't, we recognize that we can also say, I will, right? I'm choosing. When we say I will or I won't, we're emphasizing our choice. When we say I can't, it's impossible. I'll never be a goalie in the NHL. Well, that was a whole different ball game. Well, a whole different hockey game than Shannon making the adjustments that needed to be made in child care and in when dinner got made and when I left for work and what I wore. And big difference important for me to realize because as long as I was saying I can't, I was miserable. And when I realized that what I really meant was that I won't, I could make the choice that said I will. Sometimes when we say I can't, what we're really saying is I won't make the necessary adjustments in the midst of this change. All right. Number two, sometimes when we say I can't, what we really mean is it's going to take a lot of work <clears throat> and I won't do what it takes. <clears throat> I'll say that again. Sometimes when we say I can't, what we are really saying is it's going to take a lot of work and I won't do what it takes. So hear me out here. When we're saying I won't because I won't do what it takes, <clears throat> That sometimes is legitimate. It is important for us to count the cost. If there's a change that we say we want and we look at that and say, you know what, it's just going to be too costly. That's legitimate. But to tell ourselves we can't because, because it's going to take a lot of work, because that's too hard. When we say I can't because it's too hard, <clears throat> where's our focus going? Is it going on the part of us that's powerful and that can do hard things. When we say, I can't do that because it's too much work, are we saying that we're able to, but we're choosing not to? That's a whole different ball game. I'm not saying that we can never say can't. What I'm asking you to do so that you can thrive is to respect the now, to face your I can't and be real with yourself. Are, am I really absolutely incapable of doing that thing? Or is it just that it's a lot of work and I won't do what it takes? All right. <clears throat> and number three is this. And this one is huge. This one is so rampant, um, especially when something like a pandemic hits. And we felt like, perhaps you felt like you had momentum going, right? I was on a roll. It's not fair. That's number three. I can't. I can't make the change. I can't adjust because it's not fair. And I won't. This is the truth. You holding your breath and folding your arms and refusing to change and saying, I can't change when what it really is, is you saying, I won't adjust because it's not fair. That's not changing anything, including the situation. And it's sure not helping you. It's surely not helping you. It is so valuable to be able to take a step back, to be honest with ourselves, and say, all right, I've been saying I can't change. I can't adjust. I know some of you have children that are due to go back to school in September. Some of you don't know what's next, right? It's not fair. It's not fair. Everything was fine until all of this junk hit. It's tempting to get caught up in that and say, I can't deal with it. I can't. 
Have you heard anybody say that? Maybe you were um, having coffee with a friend and, and the hand goes up and, and she goes, I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't even talk. I can't even talk about it. Maybe you said that. It's not that you can't. It's that you're choosing not to. It's that you won't. When you acknowledge that you're making a choice, you open up the possibility that you can make a different choice. When you acknowledge that you are blaming circumstances for your indecision to make a choice, when you do that, you cut off your options. You stop thinking about them. Carol's sharing something here. She said, I had to let one doctor go because the work and stress from that one doctor was not worth the pay. It affected my health. That has only happened a few times, but my health is first. You just helped me to realize that again, I made the right decision. Yeah, Carol, thinking I can't, that's a valuable piece of my income. That's a doctor that that is, you know, a third of my business perhaps. I can't, I can't say no to them. But when you shift from saying I can't to I won't because I'm afraid, I won't because I don't know yet how to fill in that income gap. I won't because, well, now you've got some things you can work on, right? And it allows us to start moving forward. I love that example. And Carol, like you said, I made the right decision. You made the right decision because you went out of that can't to it's just that I won't. And when I acknowledge that it's because I won't, now I can choose to do it. Can't sets us up to blame. Can't is where all of our excuses lie. I can't. I can't help it. One of the funniest things that when I look back on my married life, one of the funniest things that I reflect on wasn't funny at the time, but boy, did I learn a lot from it. And it was the fact that I slammed car doors. My husband had a, a nice car and he did not want me to put all of my energy behind slamming that door shut. He said, Shannon, it'll, it'll shut with a lot less force and you're not going to make things rattle when you slam that door. And I would say, I can't help it. I can't help it. Well, what I really mean is, is that I won't do what it takes to stop. I can't help it. I can't help it that I just speak without thinking. How many people have you seen sabotage their positive growth because they blamed their upbringing or their habits? I can't help it. We can almost always help it. We're not talking about being a goalie in the NFL. We're talking about things that we do have control of. And when we say, I can't, we are giving ourselves a free pass to not even try, right? A free pass to not even try. When we say can't, we focus on our limitations. And where our focus goes, say it with me, our energy flows. When we say, I can't do it, we focus on our limitations in the midst of change and we empower those limitations. So I'm encouraging you tonight to not say, I can't, or at least not say it unless you are doggone sure it's true. I cannot be a goalie in the NHL. But you know what? I can be a brain surgeon. I can. I absolutely can. I won't be a brain surgeon. I won't be a brain surgeon because it's going to take a lot longer to get educated than I want to invest. It would be a lot more difficult for me than me choosing to do something in my strength zone. Shannon, not being a brain surgeon is 100% legitimate, but it is not because I can't be one. It's because I won't. And I have good reasons why I will not. And then there's Shannon who got booted out of her, her office job that she loves training and developing and, and, and coaching people. And Shannon had to go back out and drive a forklift and spent way too many days saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. 
No, I could do it. I just didn't want to do it. And once I realized that, I could start choosing. Okay, so what would it take? This is the thing. When we say it's not fair, when we say I can't because it's not fair, when we say I can't because there's a pandemic and it ruined my momentum, I can't because I have three kids, one in elementary school, one in middle school, and one in high school, and I can't juggle them going to school and me and my startup entrepreneur business. I can't do all of that. And when we say, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And we blame our circumstances. Our circumstances won't allow it. We put all of the power on things outside of ourselves when actually it's ours to choose. And we can always choose according to our priorities. We can choose to work within any change that comes our way. This is a promise. We can choose to work within any change that comes our way. If we are willing to move out of, I can't deal with it to, I won't, but I can choose to if I want. I will, I will do it. I will figure it out. I will find a way. I will be resilient. I will be hopeful. This is the thing, you know, I'm a person of faith. What God tells me is this, Shannon, you can do all things through Christ because he strengthens you. That's what he says to me. All things. I've heard other people put it this way. The universe doesn't do things to me. It does things for me. This is the thing that's so funny about change, especially the change that we think is not fair. The pandemic that ruined our momentum, that caused us to have to pivot our business and all of those in-person trainings that, okay, I'll speak for myself, that I had planned and all of the training and development that I had scheduled to do face-to-face -face with these HR departments, all of that went away. Big change came my way. Big change came your way. And I could look at that and say, that's the reason why my business failed. Or you can say, that's the reason why I made the changes I needed to make to get where I needed to be. The things that have come at us through this pandemic, they aren't happening to you. They can be happening for you, but it will require you to get out of the I can't and it's impossible frame of mind into the frame of mind that says, it's not that I can't, I won't. What would it take for me to do it? How am I closing off my options by saying, I can't do it. I just can't. That doesn't mean that you do everything, but it does mean that you understand that you could do everything if you chose to. Now all the power is back in your court. The pandemic threw a lot of stuff, surprises our way, but it's not always pandemics. Sometimes it's a loved one who gets ill. Sometimes we get ill. Sometimes there's unexpected obligations that happen with our family. Sometimes our, biz, our, our employer goes out of business. That's why we have Sunday Night Live because there's always change. And we can learn to thrive in it. And one of the best ways that we are going to be able to thrive in the midst of whatever change comes our way is acknowledging that the things that we say, I can't, are really things that we're saying, I won't. And if we just take a little bit of a look at those, we can determine, is that a good choice? Is that a good choice? Oh, wow. You helped us make the changes that we had to make to stay in business and to thrive. Church, too. That's amazing, Carol. Thank you. I am glad that I'm a part of your journey. I'm honored to do it. Thank God. Thank God that we can come together and share principles that will serve us well, no matter what change comes our way. It's an honor. It's an honor. And so now I want you to get that paper and pen out. And this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to... At, like at the top, you're gonna, it's going to be like you're making a list. You know, on one side, I want you to draw a line down the middle of that paper. And on one side, I want you to write the word can't. 
And on the other side of that line, I want you to write the word won't. And so write down some of the things that you've been saying you can't do. Maybe you've been saying, I can't go back to school to get my degree. I can't go back to school. Maybe you've been saying, I can't change my job. Maybe you've been saying, I can't deal with all of the stuff that's happening in the world right now. What's your list of things that you've been saying I can't do? And now on the other side of that, I want you to reframe that. It's not really that I can't deal with whatever change happened, the impact COVID's had on my business. It's that I won't figure out a way to use technology to serve my clients instead. But if I will do that, now I'll get on the right track. I can't shuts it down. I won't says, yeah, I won't. And maybe I still won't. But when we identify that it's us digging in, it's not that it's impossible. It's that we're choosing not to look at our options. Everything has the possibility to change. I'm encouraging you tonight to hashtag respect the now. Be honest with yourself. Write that down. Where are you saying I can't? And then if you are honest with yourself, what are you just saying you won't do? And now take a look at that and say, where can I go with this? What could I do next? What price am I willing to pay to get that result I said I wanted? You get to choose. I love what Henry Ford said because it's it's powerful. He's concise and he's 100% right. He said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And as long as you think you can't, well, it must be impossible and you'll never try anything else to help you move forward. But when you realize that you're actually acting out, I won't, and you're being stubborn about your options, perhaps you've counted the cost and thought it was not worth it, be honest about that. I know I could, but it's just not worth it to me. Totally legit. Especially when you've got your values and your priorities identified in your life, right? That's what they're there for. So that we can know if I won't is actually lined up with the things that we say are important in our life. With that, mwah, I'm going to let you go for this evening. You have blessed me by being here. I love to get your comments. If you've got something that you can't or won't do, I hope that you will post it in here. I would love to share it with you. I would love to share it with you. And I think, I'm, I know some of you who are watching, I know for sure some of you are watching, spent years and years stuck in situations that you thought you couldn't change. And through connecting with the principles of Thrive and Change, connecting with the idea that you are powerful, that you do have choices and options, you were able to make big decisions that put you on a healthier path that gave you a healthier mindset. You did that. You did that. You shifted from I can't to I won't and realized it's not that I can't, it's that I won't. And now I can will it. I can choose to do it. You're awesome. I love you all. Thank you for being here. I'd love to see that list. Take a snapshot and post it if you've got it. Um, and anything else, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear where you're at. I'd love to help you if I can. And you, you're talking to people who want you to succeed right here. That's what we're about. Take care. God bless. Mwah. Goodbye.